Greetings, everybody. Chaplain Bob Walker here, Light of the World Ministries. Oh, you know the deal. Uh, we're going to take a look at why Dan is not in the 144,000. And no, I'm not talking about Daniel and the one in the lion's den. I'm talking about the tribe of Dan. So let's take a look at Revelation 7. There's actually people that will tell you that Dan uh, was cast out and gotten rid of by the Lord. Is that true? Well, I don't know. Dan did some stupid stuff. But uh, let's take a look. Revelation 7, verse 1. And after these things, I saw four angels standing on the four corners of the earth. And, uh, <laughs> you know, uh, you got flat earth people say, see, see, the earth is a square. It's flat and a square. Well, in Isaiah, it talks about the circle of the earth. You ever seen a square, four square circle? I I don't know. Figure of speech. Come on, people. You know, four corners of the earth. North, east, south, west. Duh. I saw four angels standing on the four corners of the earth, holding the four winds of the earth, that the wind should not blow on the earth, nor on the sea, nor on any tree. And people, it's foolish to argue over the shape of the earth. Foolish. We ought to be arguing over what kind of rocks to use to stone uh, certain people that uh, like little boys as playthings, if you catch my drift. Yeah, I vote granite. I think we ought to use granite. Quartz would be all right, too, but I like granite. Verse 2. And I saw another angel ascending from the east, having the seal of the living God. And he cried with a loud voice to the four angels to whom it was given to hurt the earth and the sea, saying, Hurt not the earth, neither the sea, nor the trees, till we have sealed the servants of our God in their foreheads. Now, I don't know about you, but I would much rather have the seal of God than the mark of the beast in my forehead. But I'm not going to be part of the 144,000 because, um, well, we'll find out soon. Verse 4. And I heard the number of them which were sealed, and there were sealed an hundred and forty and four thousand of all the tribes of the children of Israel. And of course, they want you to think that's those antichrists over in the Middle East. I don't think so. Of the tribe of Judah were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Reuben were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Gad were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Asher were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Nephtalim were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Manasseh were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Simeon were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Levi were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Issachar were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Zebulon were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Joseph were sealed 12,000 of the tribe of Benjamin were sealed 12,000. That's funny. Joseph, um, let's see. Manasseh was one of Joseph's sons. So instead of Dan, it seems like Manasseh was uh, substituted. Because you had Ephraim and Manasseh were Joseph's sons. So, let's see. Of the tribe of Joseph were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Benjamin were sealed 12,000. Uh, I guess we'll read the whole chapter. What do you think? What do you think? Verse 9. After this I beheld, and lo, a great multitude, which no man could number, 
of all nations and kindreds and people and tongues stood before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed with white robes, palms in their hands. And they cried with a loud voice, saying, Salvation to our God, which sitteth upon the throne and unto the Lamb. And all the angels stood round about the throne and about the elders and the four beasts, which fell before the throne on their faces and worshiped God, saying, Amen, blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be unto our God forever and ever. Amen. And one of the elders answered, saying unto me, What are these which are arrayed in white robes? And whence came they? You know, the Bob translation would be, uh, Who are these guys with these uh, white clothing and uh, where did they come from? You know, the angel's asking John. Verse 14. And I said unto him, Sir, thou knowest. You know, it's like, hey, what are you asking me for? You know the answer to that. And he said to me, These are they which came out of great tribulation and have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. I wonder how many of those are going to be pre-tribbers. Therefore, are they before the throne of God and serve him day and night in his temple? And he that sitteth on the throne shall dwell among them. They shall hunger no more, neither thirst any more. Neither shall the sun light on them, nor any heat. For the Lamb which is in the midst of the throne shall feed them and shall lead them unto living waters, living fountains of waters. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. All right, let's go to Revelation 14, verse 1. And I looked, and lo, a lamb stood on the Mount Sion, and with him an hundred and forty-four thousand, having his father's name written in their foreheads. So here it is, the hundred and forty-four thousand. And I heard a voice from heaven, as the voice of many waters, and as the voice of a great thunder, and I heard the voice of harpers harping with their harps. Harpers harping with their harps. And they sung, as it were, a new song before the throne and before the four beasts and the elders. And no man could learn that song but the hundred and forty and four thousand, which were redeemed from the earth. These are they which are not, uh, these are they which were not defiled with women. For they are virgins. Oh, that's why I'm out of the picture there. No way. I defiled myself with more than a few women. Some of them of very questionable standards. These are they which follow the Lamb with whithersoever he goeth. These were redeemed from among men, being the first fruits unto God and to the Lamb. It's funny that Jehovah's Witnesses all say that they're going to be the 144,000. Even the married ones. And that's the problem when you get your doctrines from a organization instead of from the Bible. All right, so when we read the other chapter of Revelation, uh, Dan was not mentioned. Did you notice that? Yeah. Now, what's the deal with Dan? Well, in Genesis 30 and verse 6, And Rachel said, now Rachel was the mother of Dan. And Rachel said, God hath judged me. God hath judged me. And hath also heard my voice, and hath given me a son. Therefore called she his name Dan. Dan. There you go. Dan means judged. All right. Uh, Genesis 49, 16. 
Dan shall judge his people. Dan shall judge his people as one of the tribes of Israel. Dan shall be a serpent by the way, an adder in the path. Uh, an adder is a very, very dangerous snake, by the way. You ever heard of a puff, ad puff adder? They got another one that's called a death adder because you get bitten by a death adder and, well, you get the picture. Dan shall be a serpent, by the way, an adder in the path that biteth the horse heels so that his rider shall fall backward. Now, I don't know if you know it, but um, Dan was a ocean-going tribe. Some people connect them with the Phoenicians. Some people connect them with the Vikings. You know, they were a very warlike and ocean-going tribe. And there is even evidence that the Vikings came the, to America. Yeah. Christopher Columbus discovered America? I don't think so. I think the Vikings were here first. But uh, a lot, a lot of uh, places in Europe are called by the name of Dan. You ever heard of the Danube River? Yeah. Have you ever heard of the um, the Danes? D-A-N-E-S. You know, Denmark. Now, we spell it D-E-N-M-A-R-K. Denmark. They spell it Danmark. D-A-N. Mark, the mark of Dan. Matter of fact, uh, they call themselves the the Dan Danish. Dan, D-A-N-I-S-H. Do you know what I-S-H means in Hebrew? Ish. It means man. Uh, so you could say Dan the man or the man Dan. I mean, really. And and then when you uh, tell demon nominational people about all this stuff oh that's a that's that 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 israel stuff you know that's a conspiracy theory that's you know no 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 we want to believe that the antichrist over in the middle east or or israel well you know what go take a look at all the prophecies that israel would fulfill that god all the pr promises that god made to israel and prophecies. And then when the you know who's in the Middle East don't fulfill them, well, you can call God a liar. But I guess, guess what? Europeans did fulfill all those prophecies. And all those uh, BL and uh, ACK Hebrews, uh, they don't fulfill the prophecies either. The only prophecy they fulfill, oh, we be slaves on ships. Well, guess what? Every culture in the world has been in slavery at one time or another. Matter of fact, uh, Shanghai, China, you ever heard I was Shanghai'd? Well, that's what it meant. Uh, they'd find you in a bar and half drunk and you'd walk out and they'd knock you over the head. Next thing you know, the next morning you wake up and you're 20 miles off off the sea and uh hey uh, if you want to swim back to shore go for it but other than that you're gonna you know you're gonna serve on this ship until we get to port so go raise that sail over there pull on that rope if you want to get fed or we'll throw you over the side and you could be uh fish food uh <laughs> you know that's their claim to fame. We were slaves. Uh, yeah, well, tell tell the Irish about slavery. Yeah. So, uh, seriously, take a look at all the prophecies that God made, all the promises and prophecies that God made to Israel. Europe fulfills every single one of them. And the you-know-who's in the Middle East do not which is one of the reasons uh, 
Well, there was a guy that was a, um, became an atheist. He used to believe as a child, and he became an, uh, an atheist. And then they asked him why, and he says, well, pfft, because those people that you call the chosen people over in the Middle East, they don't fulfill the prophecies of the Bible. So they can't be. I, that's why I know the Bible's wrong. Trouble is, he was looking at the wrong people. Nobody told him the truth, I guess. I don't know if he died of an atheist, but, uh, you know. All right, so let's keep going here. I mean, look at this. In Numbers 2 and verse 31, one tribe, one tribe, thousands of years ago, all they that were numbered in the camp of Dan were in hundred thousand and fifty and seven thousand and six hundred. So you got one hundred and fifty seven thousand five uh, six hundred. I mean, <laughs> thousands of years ago, and you're going to tell me twelve million, you know who's, or fifteen million, you know who's in the Middle East, or all of Israel? It's no wonder people have fallen away from the faith. I mean, this was thousands of years ago. And you got 11 more tribes. There was probably over a hundred, a million, there was probably over a million uh, Israelites in the days of uh, Moses and the Numbers. You know, think about it. All right, well, Chaplain Bob, I think you're full of it, uh, talking about Dan and ships. So prove it. Oh, okay. Judges 517. Gilead abo abode beyond Jordan. And why did Dan, and why did Dan remain in ships? Ships, S-H-I-P-S. Asher continued on the seashore and abode in his breaches. So, Judges 18.2. And the children of Dan sent of their family five men from their coasts, coasts, men of valor from Zorah and from Eshtaol, whatever, to spy out the land and to search it. And they came unto them, go search the land, who, when they came to Mount Ephraim, to the house of Micah, they lodged there. So, uh, you know, the coast ships, uh, you know, Vikings, Dan, Mark, the Mark of Dan, Dan Danish. Judges 18.29, and they call the name of the city Dan, after the name of Dan, their father, who was born unto Israel, howbeit the name of the city was Laish at the first. Hmm, okay. Starting to get the picture? Now, we just covered, I just covered, uh, Ezekiel 48, and that's why I'm expounding on this a little bit here. Um, you know, this is the end time stuff. So go to Ezekiel 48, verse 30. Uh, this is, I think it's New Jerusalem. I see no reason for it not to be. The city gates, 48, Ezekiel 48, and verse 30. And these are the goings out of the city on the north side, 4,500 measures. And the gates of the city shall be after the names of the tribes of Israel. Three gates northward, one gate of Reuben, one gate of Judah, one gate of Levi. And at the east side, 4,500 and three gates, one gate of Joseph, one gate of Benjamin, one gate of Dan. Dan. And at the south side, 4,500 measures and three gates, one gate of Simeon, one of Issachar, and one of Zebulun. At the west side, 4,500 with the three gates, one gate of Gad, one gate of Asher, one gate of Naphtali. It was round about 18,000 measures, and the name of the city from that day shall be 
the Lord is there. Is the Lord in Jerusalem now? I don't think so. All right, let's uh, get ready to close this out. Revelation 21, verse 1. Now, this is uh, the end of the thousand-year millennium, the reign of Christ, when uh, Satan is bound for the thousand years. And uh, I believe that's when all the children who died in childbirth and the aborted children and what have you are given a chance to grow up. And uh, some will be saved and some will um, choose to follow Satan after he's released from his uh, prison for a while. But this is eternity. This isn't the thousand years. This is going to be eternity where time won't even be measured anymore. I mean, there's not even going to be day and night. It's just going to be all light. The Lord's going to be the light, the light of the world. Yeah, where have I heard that before? Revelation 21 and verse 1. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away. And there was no more sea. I want to read 2 Peter. I know I've read this a bunch of times. Now there's people that will tell you that 2 Peter was not written by Peter. And it doesn't belong in the Bible because it's fake. And why do they do that? Well, they do that because uh, Peter acknowledges Paul as a brother in the faith. And they don't. there's people out there that don't want you to believe that Paul was really a true apostle. So just keep that in mind. Of course, what they don't tell you is is they're charging the Holy Spirit with failing, failing to warn the apostles that Paul was a false apostle. I mean, really. You know, Paul had dealings with the po ap other apostles, and they want you to believe that, like in the book of Acts, that the Holy Spirit failed to warn the ten well, or 11, that um, <laughs> that that Paul was a false apostle. You know, really? You know? Well, Judas hung himself. So there was 11. And yeah, I know, they, they drew lots and picked Matthias. But uh, I'm sure Matthias was a nice guy. But there, nowhere in the Bible does it say where God told them to do that. He didn't tell them to do that. They did that on their own. However, my opinion, Paul was picked by Christ himself. So, what can I tell you? And, I haven't seen any books written by Matthias, have you? So, 2 Peter 3, one. The second epistle, beloved, I now write unto you, in both which I stir up your pure minds by way of remembrance that ye may be mindful of the words which were spoken before by the holy prophets and of the commandment of us, the apostles of the Lord and Savior. Knowing this first, that there shall come in the last days scoffers walking after their own lusts. Oh boy, I cannot believe the things that I have seen since I was a little kid in the early 60s. I, I just can't believe it. Verse 4. And saying. So here it is the scoffers that walk after their own lusts. And saying. Where is the promise of his coming? You know this Jesus stuff. They've been. He's been saying he's coming back for the last 2,000 years. Where is he? Huh? Huh? Where's Jesus? 2,000 years. He's never coming back. Have you ever heard that garbage? I have. Where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of the creation. 
For this they willingly are ignorant. They willingly are ignorant of that. By the word of God the heavens were of old, and the earth standing out of the water and in the water. The flood of Noah, right? Whereby the world that then was, being overflowed with water, perished. You know, there's all kinds of evidence that there was a worldwide flood. And yeah, I know some people say, well, you know, it was only a local flood. You know, because how did the Canaanites survive? Well, you know what? The Bible doesn't tell you who uh, Noah's wife was. Doesn't tell you who uh, Ham's wife was. Maybe Ham married a Canaanite woman. I don't know. That's another study I'm planning on doing. Because Ham was the father of the Canaanites. And there were giants in those days. In those days and also after that, Genesis 6, when the sons of God, Job 38, uh, angels, fallen angels, came in under the daughters of men. You know. Boy, I'll tell you what, that's one of the most hated of all the doctrines in the Bible. I have little respect for people that deny that. Uh, matter of fact, every time I hear somebody deny that, I suspect that perhaps they're probably one of the devil's disciples. Not all of them. Some of them just deceived because of the pastors, you know. But uh, I don't know. But there's a lot of evidence that there was a worldwide flood. A lot. In geology, history, legends. But not only that, um, if the flood was local... Why would God go to all the trouble to tell Noah to build an ark? Why didn't he just say, hey, Noah, I'm going to flood this area and I want you to move, you know. Yeah, move. I want you to move. Or I want you up at the top of this mountain. You know, there had been no reason for a, a you know, a local flood. He, Noah could have just packed his bags and put it on some carts and a wagon and then just, you know, gone somewhere else. But instead, he said, build an ark. So, but, you know, that's, if somebody believes in a worldwide flood, I, I mean, a, a, a local flood, that's not something to disfellowship somebody over. You know, I mean, it's just, it's like flat earth. You want to believe in a flat earth, fine. You know, I don't really care. But, you know, don't argue incessantly with me. You know, it's just, it's stupid. There's so many other more important things to worry about than, you know, oh, the Earth's flat. I mean, really? I mean, you know, we ought to be arguing over uh, how to execute capital crimes. That's what we ought to be arguing over. Method of execution. Now I want to argue over the shape of the Earth. Ugh, idiots. I mean, if you want to believe it, that's fine, but just arguing over it is pointless. For this they willingly are ignorant of, that by the word of God the heavens were of old, and the earth standing out of the water and in the water, whereby the world that then was, being overflowed with water, perished. But the heavens and the earth, which are now by the same word, are kept in store, Reserved unto fire, fire against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. But beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years and a thousand years as one day. Now there's people who know a lot more about the Bible than I do, and they kind of added up the years and genealogies in the Bible. And according to their estimation, 
the Bible's close to uh, the earth. Well, the record of from Adam to now is close to 6,000 years. Now, according to the you know who's, their uh, reckoning of the calendar is year 5,781. Now, I don't put a lot of credence in it, but, you know, that's, uh, I don't know, if you can believe anything, anything that the government and NASA puts out, uh, they say a year is 365.24 days to go, well, for a revolution. I Personally, I believe the Earth is the center of the universe and the Earth, the um, sun revolves around it. I kind of believe that, but they say, you know, it's nothing is a perfect 360 degree circle. I mean, if you look on a compass, it's 360 degrees. A perfect year would be 360 days. And the moon, uh, you know, you would have... 12 months of 30 days to make a 360-day calendar. But they're saying it's 365.24. So that 5781 could be real close to 6,000. Now, didn't the Lord work for six days? And the seventh day was the Sabbath? Oh, yeah. So if the earth is almost 6,000 years old, wouldn't there be a thousand year Sabbath, the seventh day for the Lord? You know, a day with the Lord is a thousand years and a thousand years is a day. Well, guess what? Wouldn't that, you know, there'd be a Sabbath of rest. Satan would be bound. You know, that's what I think the millennium is. The thousand year reign of Christ makes sense to me um, you know earth is about 6,000 years old then there'll be a Sabbath for a thousand years and then after that um, little season Satan's unbound leads everybody into um, a, you know rebellion against God God destroys the evil and then it's eternity. I hope I'm explaining that properly. I mean, I know what I'm thinking, but sometimes I'm just not real good at explaining things. But, uh, you know, we've had six days, you know, thousand years. And then we're going to have the thousand year Sabbath of rest, the millennium. So, Second Peter 3.8. But beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering to usward, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Well, that's a dirty word nowadays. Obedience and repentance. Oh, people hate that. You don't hear that in Benny Hinn's church. You don't hear that. Uh-uh. Verse 10. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, not for believers, for, for unbelievers. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. See? Global warming is real. But Al Gore doesn't have a clue. The elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also and the works that are in therein shall be burned up. Oh yeah, global warming. <laughs> yeah. Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of persons ought ye to be in all holy conversation and godliness? looking for and hasting, hasting unto the coming of the day of God, wherein the, heavens, wherein the heavens, being on fire, shall be dissolved, 
and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for new heavens, new heavens and a new earth, wherein dwelleth righteousness. And so keep that in mind. New heavens, new earth. We're going to go back to Revelation 21 in a, in a minute. Verse 14. Wherefore, beloved, seeing that ye look for such things, be diligent that ye may be found of him in peace, without spot and blameless. And here we go why they hate uh, 2 Peter. An account that the long suffering of our Lord is salvation, even as our beloved brother Paul, even as our beloved brother Paul, also according to the wisdom given unto him, hath written unto you, as also in all his epistles, speaking of them of these things, in which are some things hard to be understood. Paul's writings are not easy to understand. Some things, anyways. In which are some things hard to be understood, which they that are unlearned and unstable rest or wrestle, as they do the uh, as they as they do also the other scriptures under their own destruction. You know, people that deny Paul, Peter says they're unlearned, they're unstable, and they wrestle Paul's writings as they do the other scriptures unto their own destruction. So I don't have any, I have no use for those people. None. Ye therefore, beloved, seeing ye know these things be, be, before, beware lest ye also, being led away with the error of the wicked... Yeah, Paul haters, error of the wicked, fall from your own steadfastness, but grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. To him be glory both now and forever. Amen. Revelation 21, verse 1. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, not that polluted mess, old Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride, adorned for her husband. Let me tell you something, people. I've done hundreds of weddings. And I'll tell you what, I've never seen a bad-looking bride on her wedding day. Never. Verse 3. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them, and be their God. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. And he said unto me, It is done. I am Alpha and Omega. The Greek letters begin, uh, the first and last of the Greek alphabet, people. Greek, 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 not Hebrew. When they talk about Hebrew roots, tell them, yeah, Hebrew roots, but Greek fruits, F-R-U-I-T-S. Yes, the Hebrew Old Testament was the root, and then all the fruit came from the Greek. Oh, yeah. So when they want to take you back to the Hebrew roots, tell them, uh-uh, uh-uh. I don't eat the roots. I eat the fruits. You know, I don't want to eat apple tree roots. I want to eat apples from the fruit. 
I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give unto him that is a thirst of the fountain of the water of life freely. He that overcometh shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. But the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. You know what brimstone is, people? Sulfur. Nasty. And there came unto me one of the seven angels, which had the seven vials full of the seven last plagues, and talked with me, saying, Come hither, I will show thee the bride, the Lamb's wife. Now keep this in mind. It says, Come hither, I will show thee the bride, the Lamb's wife. Verse 20, Revelation 21, verse 10. And he carried me away in the spirit to a great and high mountain and showed me that great city, the holy Jerusalem, descending out of heaven from God, having the glory of God and her light was like unto a stone most precious, even like a jasper stone clear as crystal, and had a great wall and high. See, heaven has a wall and a strict immigration policy, but hell is open borders. Keep that in mind. And had a wall great and high, and had twelve gates, twelve gates, and at the gates twelve angels, and names written thereon, which are the names of the twelve tribes of the children of Israel, the Lamb's wife. You know, God's people in the Old Testament is God's people in the New Testament. But the Baptists want you to believe, oh, well, there's a 13th gate, gate for the Gentiles. Oh, really? Where is it? I can't find it, Mr. Baptist preacher. Well, you just don't understand dispensational truth. You don't know how to rightly divide the word of truth. Well... Well, if you think the Antichrists are God's chosen people, maybe you're messed up, Mr. Dispensational Baptist Preacher. So, 12 gates, 12 angels, which are the names of the 12 tribes of the children of Israel. On the east, three gates. On the north, three gates. On the south, three gates. And on the west, three gates. And the wall of the city had twelve foundations, and in them the names of the twelve apostles of the Lamb. Twelve tribes, twelve apostles. Ah, gee, what a coincidence. Yeah. So let's read Revelation 21, 14 again. And the wall of the city had 12 foundations, and in them the name names of the 12 apostles of the Lamb. And he that talked with me had a golden reed to measure the city, and the gates thereof, and the wall thereof. And the city lieth four square, and the length is as large as the breadth. And he measured the city with the reed, 12,000 furlongs, the length and the breadth and the height of it are equal. Let me look up a furlong because I'm not sure what it is. So it is the eighth part of a mile. Eighth part of a mile. Let me convert that to meters. So a furlong would be about 200 meters. Okay? So keep that in mind. That's for all you... Uh, folks that are in the uh, European Union or the UK. Uh, let's see. Let's go back to Revelation 21, verse 16. 
And the city lieth four square, and the length is as large as the breadth. And he measured the city with the reed, 12,000 furlongs. The length and the breadth and the height of it are equal. And he measured the wall thereof, 140 and four cubits. So that's about 75 meters. No, I'm sorry. That's about 75 feet or about 25 yards or 25 meters. That's a good size wall. 25 meters, yeah. I don't think some bad people are going to be jumping over that wall. And he measured the wall thereof in 140 and four cubits, according to the measure of man, that is, of the angel. And the building of the wall of it was jasper, and the city was pure gold, like unto clear glass. And the foundations of the wall of the city were garnished with all manner of precious stones. The first foundation was jasper, the second sapphire, the third a chalcedony, the fourth an emerald, the fifth sardonyx, the sixth sardius, the seventh chrysolite, the eighth beryl, the ninth topaz, the tenth a chrysophilus, the eleventh a jacinth, the twelfth an amethyst. And people, these are the same exact stones, from what I can tell, uh, that the gemstones that the high priest would wear, uh, I think it was an ephod, if I remember correctly. Revelation 21, 21. And the twelve gates were twelve pearls. Remember Jesus uh, talked about the, uh, the parable of the pearl of great price? Oh, yeah. Yeah. And the twelve gates were twelve pearls. Maybe we should read that real quick. Oh, let's take a look at Matthew 13, 44. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto treasure hid in a field. Remember in the parable of the wheat and the tares, Jesus said the field is the world. So what was the treasure hid in the world or in the field? Israel. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto treasure hid in a field, the which when a man hath found, he hideth and for joy, therefore goeth and selleth all that he hath and buyeth that field. And who was he that sold all that he had, shed his blood on the Christ and bought the field? He paid for this world with his blood. Verse 45, Matthew 13, 45. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto a merchant man seeking goodly pearls, who, when he had found one pearl of great price, went and sold all that he had and bought it. Yeah, he paid for it with his life. Revelation 21, 21. And the twelve gates were twelve pearls. Every several gate was of one pearl, and the street of the city was pure gold, as it were transparent glass. So here it is, uh, crystal glass. Um, you know, when you look at lead, lead is kind of a grayish, blackish type metal. But uh, have you ever heard of lead crystal? I've seen it in Germany. It's Gorgeous. I always loved lead crystal. But it's kind of transparent. You can see through it. Well, I guess it's kind of opaque, but you can see through it. It's beautiful, but it's lead. But it's a crystal. Well, that's what I guess sort of kind of like the gold's going to be. It's going to be transparent like glass. Because all the atoms are lined up and, the, and light can go through it. Can you imagine that? Gold like glass. Verse 22. And I saw no temple therein. Ah, so Ezekiel's temple is going to have to be the millennium. See? Because in, in eternity, there is, no, there is no temple. And I saw no temple therein, for the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are the temple of it. And the city had no need of the sun, neither of the moon, to shine in it, for the glory of God did lighten it, 
and the Lamb is the light thereof. Ah, John 8, 12, right? I think I've, I think I've heard that a couple times. And the nations of them which are saved shall walk in the light of it. And the kings of the earth do bring their glory and honor into it. And the gates of it shall not be shut at all by day, for there shall be no night there. And they shall bring the glory and honor of the nations into it. What nations? The nations of Israel, people. Uh, you know, this is the same word as Gentile. Nations and Gentiles is the same word in the Greek or in the Hebrew. Well, it's not the same word in the Greek and Hebrew, but uh, in the Greek, it's the word ethnos, which is where we get the word ethnic group, you know, like Caucasians. Whereas in the Hebrew, it's goyim, uh, which sometimes they translate as Gentiles, sometimes as nations. But here they're talking about the nations of Israel, ethnos, the ethnic group. But it's the same word in the New Testament that they translate as Gentiles. So when you hear somebody say, well, Gentile means non-Jew, uh, you know you're talking to somebody that's ignorant or possibly a deceiver. Or maybe they're deceiving ignorantly. I don't know. And they shall bring the glory and honor of the nations into it. And there shall in no wise enter into it anything that defileth, neither whatsoever worketh abomination or maketh a lie, but they which are written in the Lamb's book of life. And I am of the opinion Dan is going to be on one of those gates. But, you know, he was in Ezekiel. So, but he's not going to be of the 144,000 sealed. Why is that, Chaplain Bob? Uh, well, you know what? I've read other people's opinions, and I don't know. I absolutely do not know why Dan is not one of the sealed of the 144,000. No idea. So... What can I tell you? All right. Well, all blessings, praise, glory, and honor to God the Father and His only begotten Son, Jesus, who is the Christ, the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor in Jesus' name. Amen.